We have some SpaceX news and some Blue Origin news to talk about. And do you want the good news or the bad news first? And I'll give you a trigger warning because apparently some people don't see what happened with SpaceX as bad news. But of course, in an ideal world, they wouldn't have this anomaly yet again during testing at NASA's and they wouldn't be held back. So I do think it is unfortunate. But people are split on this and I want to talk about it. And then we'll get into Blue Origin. So with Within less than 24 hours of SpaceX triumphantly posting that Booster 18, the first Super Heavy V3, would be beginning its pre-launch testing. They shared the first operations will test the booster's redesigned propellant systems and its structural strength and shared these amazing photos. But unfortunately, not long after that, Booster 18 suffered an anomaly, and you can see it in this video from Lab Padre. And this was during gas system pressure testing that SpaceX was conducting in advance of structural proof testing, which is crazy because no propellant was on the vehicle and the engines weren't even installed yet. According to SpaceX, the teams need time to investigate before they are confident of the cause. No one was injured as they maintain a safe distance for personnel during this type of testing. And so, yeah, it was something that I woke up to. It happened overnight and... A lot of people are talking about it. Some people, like Engineering Randomness, commented, Excellent. This is exactly what testing is for. If a system never fails, a test during development, either testing is not harsh enough, the test was not needed, or the design is too conservative. But other folks are being more critical, including David Willis saying, I really don't want to hear another word about how canceling SLS now is a good idea, when the rocket you want to replace it with is doing this in cryo-testing years years deep into the program. And you can see this angle from Starship Gazer showing Super Heavy Booster 18 severe LOX tank damage that occurred during the testing overnight. Eric Ralph also pessimistic, saying grimmest Starship vibes I can remember. Unless there's a huge shakeup and transparent reckoning with the many steps backward the program has taken in 2025, I can no longer say I'm fully confident that a Starship capable of safely transporting humans beyond Earth is inevitable. And I also found this post from Mark saying a lot of people saying the first V3 will not fly until late spring, but here we are watching B-18 roll out of the mega bay, all thanks to this group and so many others not pictured putting in lots of hours. So here's the group photo, and of course, this was before the anomaly. Tank Watchers even shared an interesting insight saying the downcomer might be the only thing preventing Booster 18 from fully tipping over. It'll be interesting to see how SpaceX approaches the vehicle. We're now looking at a four to six week delay for the next V3 booster as B-19 hasn't been stacked yet. And so while we wait for a cause, I did want to share this news with you because although, yes, they are still in the testing phase, as someone pointed out and said I was getting annoying for even making a video about this on YouTube, Ken Kirtland IV also shared, we are 11 flights in and on version three. Yes, this booster was first and firsts are hard, but this is a damn cryo test. Simply no excuse anymore. This took the wind out of my sails for Starship 2026, looking like another four flights to get V3 working at least. And I will say I haven't seen Elon make any posts or replies about this incident. He did repost what SpaceX posted when they were excited to do this pre-launch testing, but I haven't seen him comment about the matter, and it's been almost an entire day. This is not how they wanted to debut V3, let's be real, and I think it's newsworthy. In fact, everyone is talking about it. What's not being talked about as much and I think deserves attention is the fact that the demolition of Starbase's Pad 1 is coming to a close. In fact, look at this video from NSF that S.E. Robinson Jr. shared. The final leg of Starbase's Pad 1 OLM has fallen. And so hopefully SpaceX is able to figure out the problem in a swift manner and get back on track so that we can actually have another Starship launch soon. But I told you I'd talk about Blue Origin, so let's get into it. Jeff Bezos shared this photo of the Blue Moon MK-1 flight vehicle that will land near Shackleton Crater. We'll soon be doing fully integrated checkout tests at over 26 feet tall, 8 meters. It's smaller than our MK-2 human lander, but larger than the historic Apollo lander. 
Jared Isaacman, our future NASA administrator, or at least he better be, commented, this is great. Scott Manley says, looks like an impressive piece of hardware. I hope the software is just as robust given recent lunar lander records. And also, apparently, Project Kuiper, the competitor for Starlink, has rebranded to Amazon Leo. I guess this was announced the same time as the new Glenn launch was happening, which is why I didn't notice it. But here's the logo from Amazon Leo. Of course, that stands for Low Earth Orbit, and that's where these satellites will reside. And so Amazon is starting to build out their own version of Starlink. You can follow their next mission with ULA launch, which will be their first as Amazon LEO, which is set for Monday, December 15th, with the launch window opening at 3.52 a.m. Eastern Time. This will be Amazon's fourth Atlas V launch, the seventh mission of the year, and it will add 27 satellites to their growing constellation. But Blue Origin also dropped some information about New Glenn or NG3. Some stuff about upgrades that I think you'll find interesting. So after their wildly successful New Glenn 2 flight or NG2, they shared on November 20th this New Glenn update. Upgraded engines and sub-cooled components drive enhanced performance. Blue Origin announced a series of upgrades to New Glenn designed to increase payload performance and launch cadence while enhancing reliability. The enhancements span propulsion, structures, avionics, reusability, and recovery operations, and will be phased into upcoming New Glenn missions beginning with NG3. One of the primary enhancements includes higher performing engines on both stages. Total thrust for the seven BE-4 booster engines is increasing from 3.9 million pound force to 4.5 million pound force. BE-4 has already demonstrated 625,000 pound force on the test stand, at current propellant conditions and will achieve 640,000 pound force later this year with propellant subcooling increasing the current thrust capability from the existing 550,000 pound force. The total thrust of the two BE Three U's powering New Glenn's upper stage is increasing from the original design of 320,000 pound force to 400,000 pound force thrust over the next few missions. BE-3U has already demonstrated 211,658 pound force on the test stand. These enhancements will immediately benefit customers already manifested on New Glenn to fly to destinations including low Earth orbit, the moon, and beyond. Additional vehicle upgrades include a reusable fairing to support increased flight rates, an updated lower cost tank design, and a higher performing and reusable thermal protection system to improve turnaround time. The next chapter in New Glenn's roadmap is a new super heavy class rocket. Named after the number of engines on each stage, New Glenn 9x4 is designing for a subset of missions requiring additional capacity and performance. The vehicle carries over 70 metric tons to low Earth orbit, over 14 metric tons direct to geosynchronous orbit, and over 20 metric tons to translunar injection. Additionally, the 9x4 vehicle will feature a larger 8.7 meter fairing. Both vehicles, 9x4 and our current variant, 7x2, will serve the market concurrently, giving customers more launch options for their missions, including mega constellations, lunar and deep space exploration, and national security imperatives such as Golden Dome. And check out this image comparing New Glenn with the Saturn V for scale and New Glenn 9x4. According to a report by Eric Berger with Ars Technica, The 9x4 variant of New Glenn will take flight as early as 2027. And so that's some Blue Origin and SpaceX news for you. While yes, it isn't as big of a deal as the anomaly or explosion that we saw at Massey's during the summer, this still is a setback for SpaceX, and I really, really hope that they can figure it out soon. And let's hope it wasn't that damn COPV tank yet again. I'll keep you guys updated on the cause, but again, I'm not trying to be overly critical. In fact, I don't think I'm being that critical at all. Yes, they are testing, and yes, this is the point of it, but I know that this is not the outcome that SpaceX wanted. So there's some news for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching my channel, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss future videos.